I grew up with my grandmother. And, um, you know, in uh, Kosovo, we all, always had one of, uh, one of the guy of family. We sent him, in a way, outside of the country because it was a really poor country, you know. So we sent him for working and take care of the family. So my father was the guy who go in Switzerland, you know, and, and take care of the family. So he was working on a restaurant. Mm -hmm. But he came, I would say, one time per year, two times, to visit us. And when he came, you know, you see him, you don't, you don't, you don't see him for a long time, so you are interested, you want to see and what he had and things like that. And I remember when he used to sleep, I take always his watch. So, and you hear the tic-tac and things like that. And, and when I came in Switzerland, um, you came to the airport, you're seeing all this publicity. Um, I said, okay, you have another thing happening, stay in your head. And during the integration, you know, you come, you don't speak French, you don't have friends, that much friends, so I was reading about, you know, other things, and watchmaking was one of the things I was interested in. And very quickly I realized that how I speak before, how I explained it before, very quickly I realized that I wanted to learn more about. And I started my apprenticeship and, and it was a good choice. So, so during uh, the apprenticeship, first you have a selection. So uh, I remember I think maybe we had, we, you have about 300 people and they're choosing two or three uh, apprent apprentices. And uh, when you're doing this selection, after that you, you start and you go in like one month in every workshop. Because for me, I learned in Patrick Philippe. So, like every month you move, you sing another métier, you can understand more and more and more. And this is all around three years. And during this three years of, of apprenticeship, uh, you have to do a, a watch, was a, actually was a pocket watch. You know, I realized that everything is important. Everything is important. And I believe that doing a watch, perfect watch, if I can say this, because the perfect doesn't exist at the end, you know, but, you know, this is why I want to learn all the steps and this is why I want to manage all the steps. Because today, when you're coming to look at the watch, first you are attracted by the aesthetics. So, you know, the dial, the case. I would say the dial maybe first. And you take it and the first relation that you have with the watch is the case okay you wind you set up you look at and when you turn back you're seeing the movement so for me all the small things are important and after that when you put maybe in the wrist you want to have a watch that you have a good time keeping you know so for me all the steps are are, are important and i don't have maybe i don't do enough watches to appreciate one thing you know it's so different my work that Every small thing it's important. But what I love the most, I love all the process. And when you finish your watch, um, it's a little yeah. You are a little sad because yeah, you But you can start a new watch. Yeah, exactly. This is why. We started with uh, with the movement before. Mm. And lately I start always with the dial and um, the case and after that with the movement so the, the process change so for us we starting always with a constraint because it had to be totally symmetric you know so this is something another constraint that not everybody start but we love the symmetry so this is why and I think for your eyes it's really always better when you seeing something symmetric you s it's you have more work there so this is why so you have the symmetry but for me if it's complication or not we always start with the base of the movement you know because you have to first set up the base of the movement. But whatever is, this is why it's important to start with the dial case, because you're seeing the layout, how it is, and you have to think about where should be, for example, the wheel of second, you know? For example, on this watch, we know that we had to think about how minute and second, but the second should be at six. So from that, you start from this point, from the second, and after that, you make it all around. And you have the other constraints, so you have to be totally symmetric. So you know that the barrel had to be, you know, at two and at 10, you know? You know, RRCC1, RRCC2, and RRCC8, 
so much magic. All of these three have different movement. Mm -hmm. All of the three, you know, you can't compare anything. Um, the RCC one is how minute, and the one RR so is how minute second, but you have the reset second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the RRCC2, you have hour, minute, deadbeat second, stop balance and reset second. The RRCCA, it's hour, minute, central second, and it's anti magnetic. So we have a Faraday cage all around the movement who protect, um, who protect from the magnetism. So the difference on all this movement, um, RRCC1, it's uh, a it's 18,000 alternance. Mm -hmm. The two is 21,600. The three is 21,600. Maybe I can show you some picture that you can really understand everything. But for example, for the idea was when I started with the one, I wanted to do 200 of this watch. Finally, I did just 550. And um, I just I just did 50, and I say okay, I don't want to continue with this movement because I want to challenge myself. So this is why we redid totally another movement. So on this movement, it's dead beat second. For making a dead beat second, I can take the movement of the RRCC1 and just add some of the component and make it. But for me, I think it's just too easy. You know, it doesn't make sense. Because when you realize that you can do something better, so you do. So on this one, I did, you have one movement, Okay, this is why you have two barrel. You have one train of wheel for the movement who give you the right time and he's the guide. And you have another train of wheel with the second barrel who come, will push the other movement. Because normally when you put that beat second, normally you take energy on the movement. On this one, you have the second one who will push. And naturally, by pushing, he's retained by the escapement of the guide movement and give us naturally that beat second, minute, and the hour. Okay? So this is why it's totally new movement. Mm -hmm. Why we go to the 21,600 alternates? Because I think for the chronometry is better. So again, it's still the goal to making better. On this one, for example, you have stop balance, reset second. This is why we evolved on an anti-magnetic. So we did completely new. Uh, watch it's central second we still keep the stop balance and not stop balance we still keep the reset second but this time we didn't put the reset sec uh, the stop balance you know why because we realize that depend where the stop balance depend the angle of the balance is when you're pushing back the crown some start, the restart take a little more time you know depend the angle of the balance so this is why we Imagine a mechanism with a clouch, like a chronograph, okay? So when we pull the crown, we have this mechanism go out, but the movement continue, keep running. And when we pull the crown, we have still this clutch going like this. In terms of chronometry, we are a little more precise. But it's again, totally new movement. We just keep one barrel. It's 2106, 21,600. Alternance. I think the symmetry change. We have all this around with the bridges, and we focus all the uh, all the center on the center. We put the hammer, we put the the uh, clutch, and things like that. And you have the balance wheel is at six, and not anymore at four. You know, BNB concept. This is why you know from from sixteen, I think sixteen or seventeen. When I was in Patek, I had the chance to having a, a turbine, you know. And I have um, an incredible emotion with this watch, I remember. And uh, from this moment, really, I take the decision in my head and I say, okay, now I want, whenever it's the case, I don't know at what time, but I want it to be independent. And from this moment, I go in the companies that I want to learn, how to learn, how to do, to having more tools to be able to launch one day. So this is why I moved to BNB Concept, because I, I knew that they doing, they conceptualize different movement for different companies. And there was interesting because I did 
different prototypes. I can see all the process how you do. You come with an idea, you put the drawing, you start to engineering, you realize the component, and finally it's there, so you're doing the prototype. So it was good learning there. It was really good learning. And after that, I came to bring the concept and re, uh, to François Pajun and re, I realized how he built the collections. You know, I realized also that if you want to do something that people will remember, you have to push yourself, not just bringing something that exists already. You, know? you have to go deeper if you want to do something that it's important. So, and this is, I think, what Jules did.